Welcome to Ahead of the Curve. I'm Susan Lasovich. Today we're talking about what my next guest calls the wealth management myth. Here to debunk the value of the diversified portfolio is Stanley J.G. Crouch. He is CEO of EXP Wealth Enhancement, which is owned by Aegis Capital, where he's also Chief Investment Officer. Welcome, Stan. Thank you, Susan. You are wading into the fire, my <laughs> friend, to say that the diversified portfolio no longer holds true is dangerous stuff because the industry has been pushing this for decades. Yeah, but it's been decades and not centuries because it's a new invention. And I don't know that people understand that part. We believe in, in diversification, tremendous diversification, but the difference is we think everything should be rooted in income and cash flow. Every instrument in the portfolio should have a payment stream that comes in and tangible return. That allows the compounding effect and the exponential growth of wealth. Where we have a problem is that the notion that really is rooted in modern portfolio theory, which simply says if you diversify among asset classes and different markets, if something bad happens in an asset class or a market, the others are not correlated. In other words, they're not going to trade in the same way and their values will be different. And what's happened, unfortunately, in the modern world is that no longer holds true. Many people have heard this notion of risk on, risk off, and it's really so. So whether it's South Korean currency or intermediate term European high-grade corporate bonds or soybeans you know, in the commodity market relative to Canadian oil equities, things are trading in lockstep because the money goes either on or off in terms of risk. But, uh, but Stan, I mean, for instance, in, we don't see, for instance, some commodities trading in lockstep with bonds or stocks, for instance. I mean, you're still seeing this uh, huge uh, catapult with gold prices, for instance. So it, it's not all true, is it? Well, it's not completely true, but the problem is that modern portfolio theory, which almost every wealth manager uses as the basis of asset allocation, in other words, choosing how much goes into equities and where those equities come from, how much goes into fixed income or bonds, how much goes into commodities, real estate, metals, precious metals, uh, or cash, is really based on something that was created it, formulaically, theoretically, because it's MPT, and the T stands for theory. The problem is those formulaic approaches do not hold true any longer. So while there's not 100% correlation in lockstep, the correlations are much closer than they used to be. So therefore, the whole notion of diversifying and getting this different benefit and different effect is less and less true. And I believe that factor, with some exceptions here and there, you mentioned gold. Gold had been risk off, risk on risk off, risk off. You know, when the summer came in 2011 and the European debt crisis and the U.S. downgrade by S&P became sort of front and center, gold spiked and gold started to trade risk off. Then, as the year wore on, gold then flipped and started to trade risk off. On. Well, that's true, I think, of commodities in general, whether it's oil or gold, other types of metals, is that they're very volatile. But what I'm hearing here, Stan, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're saying you can diversify your portfolio, you can have different types of assets. What you want is a steady income stream. So if it's stocks, you want dividends. Yes. And if you go into bonds, you want a higher yield. You want a higher return. Yes. Is that, so can you elaborate, for instance, on stocks? There aren't that many stocks paying dividends anymore. Well, in a nutshell, what we advise is do it opposite of what Wall Street and wealth management tells you to do. That means take less risk in equities. In other words, don't rely on price appreciation for your return. Anything that somebody has to pay you more than you paid at a future date to realize the investment return is purely speculative, whatever it is. Somebody has to pay you more. 
Whether that'll happen or not depends on a lot of factors out of your control. Secondly, we say take more perceived, and I mean that very importantly, risk in bonds. Because what we try to do is do the fundamental credit work and we get down and dirty with knowing that those credits that we select are sustainable, that they can continue to pay their cash flows, that they have better than average margins to do so, that they are fundamentally sound, and that we have real collateral in the security. The rating to us is immaterial. We actually use the rating system for our, our advantage, where we take medium and even lower grade or non-rated and infuse those in the portfolios. So we say less risk in equities, focus on income, because that's where most of the return. Dividends. Yeah, yes. dividends. Where that, that's where most of the return has historically come. And then get more yield out of the bond side and what some would call more perceived risk. Don't buy all triple A. Buy down the curve in terms of you know, quality as it's perceived by the rating agencies, which we know are fraught with some question, and get much more coupon and generate better income. So so that's really the watchword. Diversified portfolio shouldn't be the basic tenant of an investor as he or she goes about planning for the future. It should be income generating. Right, and within those income, you're highly diversified. So at any given point, we own 30 to 40 different equities. We also do it much differently because instead of market cap weighting, in other words, some companies try to mimic index, indexes, indices. So if the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100, you know, the weighting of the company, how much it's worth in its market capitalization is where they put more money. So for instance, they put more money in an Apple than a much smaller company. We don't do it that way. We equal weight, almost like a bond portfolio using equities for those dividend streams. So we put roughly about 3% in each holding, regardless of how big the company is, because we're buying it for the income and the sustainability of that income going forward. It sounds like a lot of work though. Well, it's a lot of work for us because we really do our homework. It's not a lot of work for the investor because the investor, once we uh, explain this in relatively simple terms, Everybody knows that income is a good thing. Everybody likes to put in an investment and start getting an immediate and consistent cash on cash return. We've never had one client call up and complain about getting cash flow. When they see how that um, uh, aggregates and that you get this amazing compounding effect over time and you get this exponential increase, I mean, eventually it doesn't matter even what you initially invested. Your cost basis shrinks to negligible because you've gotten so much return in multiple times of what you put in, it, it gets less and less important. It, it used to be called uh, vehicles for widows and orphans <laughs> because it was a safe, reliable income stream. And that's what you're saying, go buy the income. Uh, absolutely, lower uncertainty and risk and increase certainty. And the only way we know how to do that, get cash on cash returns and compound. The best way to protect principal is to grow your principal. And the best way to grow your principal is to use compounding to your advantage. And to quote you from another, from another uh, subject, the math never lies, right? That's true, the math doesn't lie. Stanley J.G. Crouch, who is the CEO of EXP Wealth Enhancement, owned by Aegis Capital, where he's also Chief Investment Officer. Thanks so much You're for welcome. joining us, Stan. Great, great to be here. You've been watching Ahead of the Curve. I'm Susan Lasovich. Thanks so much for joining us.